Auk at the command line. There's really only two things to know to use Auk at the command line, and they're super valuable. I, I use them all the time. Let's say you run a command line program that returns some table of results like ls here. Auk lets you pick specific rows to return. So for example here, I am just returning two of the rows. That's number one. The second thing that Auk does is it lets you filter out those rows. So here I am only returning rows that match outline. Those are the two big things you need to know about Auk to use it at the command line. That's like 95% of my Auk usage. I'm gonna explain how these two examples work. We'll go through a bunch of it. And then at the end, I'll, I'll talk about the, the remaining 95%. How do you really master Auk? But let's break these ones down. So the way the row picking works is really quite simple. You take a command that returns some results, pipe it into awk, and you pick the column that you'd like to return. So here I'm just returning column one, right? Same thing here. I can do column nine and these column indexes start at one. You can just count them out to figure out which ones you return. You can also combine them. Right? So here I'm returning column five and then a tab and then column nine so that I can see the file sizes and then the file names. You can see this one's a little bit off put just because of the size of this column. Not too important in this case though. The next thing you can do, right, is matching specific rows. So here I'm running the same command, but I'm telling it only return rows that have outline. And that's why here I just get these two rows, right? Those are the only two rows from the results that have outline. But we can match lots more specific things, right? If we want to match at the beginning of the line has a dash in it. This is just a regex, right? So now we're only returning values where we have a dash here, which happens to be in LS files, right? We can also use that to match directories, which will have a D in the first instance, right? And now we're returning the directories. What else can we do, right? We can match the values in specific columns. So here, same LS command, but I'm gonna say in column five, which is our size, column uh, only match where there's a f an M and then a dollar sign, which is the end of the rows, right? So that only returns this element, which is the one, uh, it's the, my largest file by far, right? 7.8 megabytes. Also, I can do file extensions, right? So same idea, we're using a regex, right? We would do dot MD and then dollar sign is the end. It's the, the inverse of the uh, hat there. So if we do that, we only get back uh, markdown files, which is my two outlines, one of which uh, I'm in right here. We can also do exact matches on columns, right? So column three is the owner. We only want to match where the owner's at them. And bam, there we go. So this is just an easy way to match specific rows when you have a table of results. Now, Ankh just makes that like something you can very quickly do. So I have lots of examples of using Ankh that I just pulled from my history file because I end up using it all the time. So Docker PS returns a lot of information, but what I want is just the container IDs. So I get that from column one. Why might that be useful? Well, it's useful because I have this container called Rust example, and I just want to know the ID of it. And this makes it easy to just return column one uh, where it matches Rust example. Why is that great? Well, I can just feed it into Docker stop to stop that specific image from running, right? So now I'm, I'm running Docker PS, getting the ID, feeding that back into stop. Uh, also, sometimes Chrome gives me trouble. I can look at my process list and get all the Chrome instances by PID. This could easily be fed into uh, like a kill, right? Or if something's listening on local hosts, I can use this list of files and I'll just match on localhost for things that are listening on localhost instead of the actual IP name. And I get back Google, Descript. This is my Docker daemon, I believe. These are probably VS Code, not sure. This happens when I need to debug, like why can't I get this port? Somebody's already listening on it. I use this all the time. I also look at my host file. Um, you know, here I'm matching things that aren't comments and returning the matches. My host file I'm mainly using to block myself from spending too much time on Twitter or Hacker News. Paths also happens, right? Like where are my system paths? Uh, where's my name server? My name server uh, points to 2.1, which is my router I happen to know, but sometimes I need to change it. 
Uh, this lets me easily see what it's currently set as. So this is the type of thing I do with Awk when I'm using it 95% of the time. It's just this simple stuff. Uh, Awk is a full programming language though. And this book here, the Awk programming language is amazing and goes through lots of things you can do with it, um, including a script, right? Here is a script I put together that goes through Amazon results and calculates average ratings for them. I have a whole video where I walk through how to do more advanced kind of data analysis stuff using awk and it still ends up pretty small examples but more than you might just do at the command line but that's it that's kind of the big idea behind awk is these two concepts that you can pick specific columns that you can match on them that covers most of the use cases if you want to learn more check out the other video and also check out earthly who i work for thank you